And this is a video review on the Lenovo ThinkPad T14 Gen 1 laptop for use in 2024 and onward. This AMD version of the T14 features a Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U CPU with 6 cores and 12 threads, a CPU that features Radeon RX Vega 6 integrated graphics. Currently we have 40GB of DDR4 3200MHz RAM, 8GB of that is soldered onto the motherboard, and I installed a 32GB RAM stick because that's all I had with the 3200MHz speed at the moment. Usually I'd sell this laptop with 16GB as a base install for RAM. And we're looking at this fairly slick 1920 by 1080 Full HD display panel. And currently there's an Intel Wi-Fi 6 AX200 M.2 Wi-Fi card that features Bluetooth 5.1. And there's Windows 11 Pro installed onto a 256GB SK Hynix PC401 NVMe solid state drive. And judging by this Dolby audio print on the palm rest, hopefully the stock stereo speakers will be of decent quality. These stock speakers are not that bad. Of course, using a Bluetooth speaker or headphones will greatly enhance that experience. Onto the right I.O., there's the spot where a smart card reader would be. Unfortunately, we do not have this feature. There's one USB 3.2 always on, and a grill for air exhaust from the CPU fan, RJ45 Ethernet port, and the version of the Kensington lock. And onto the left side, we have a USB-C charging port, another USB-C port with the functionality of DisplayPort, a USB 3.0 port, an HDMI port, microphone and headphone combo jack, and a micro SD card reader. On the back, there's also a SIM card slot. As for the keyboard, it's the characteristic ThinkPad style that I think has been around since the launch of the T530, X230, etc. This one is non-backlit. And the multi-touch touchpad is very nice, it feels good. And the red track point is accented by the three buttons up top that you can operate, or that I usually operate with my thumb and pinky finger while navigating. There's still the same 720p webcam, Let's flip this laptop over and let's take a look inside. To remove the back panel, you'll just need a Phillips head screwdriver and we'll start by loosening the screws. And using something like a plastic guitar pick, you can score along the palm rest and the bottom panel, gently releasing the plastic clips. And the reason why I use plastic is to not mark up the surface of the laptop and cause damage. Now that we have it open, here's the large 50 watt hour battery that takes up a fair amount of space within the laptop. And right above that we have our one available DIMM slot for RAM expansion. And as I noted earlier, we currently have a Timetech DDR4 3200 MHz stick installed, which gives us a total of 40 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes of which is soldered onto the motherboard. And beside that, we have our slot for an NVMe solid state drive. Right above that is the slot for the M.2 Wi-Fi card. And right beside that is the port for the WWAN card. And I did test whether or not this will house a M.2 SATA SSD. Unfortunately, it does not recognize an SSD, so that is not an option. However, if you experience something different, let me know in the comments below. I would really love to know. And right here is the heat sink above the CPU with a heat pipe leading to an exhaust fan blowing air out this way from the laptop. If you want to add new thermal paste or clean it up, you can simply remove these four screws and it comes off quite easily. Just be careful not to tear the power connection from the motherboard for the fan, which is right here. I've already applied new thermal paste, so I don't need to demonstrate this at the moment, but it is quite easy if you choose to do so. And up here we have some cable connections for the speakers and the display panel. Over here this looks like a bridge connector from this RJ45 Ethernet port to the rest of the motherboard. So using a Phillips head screwdriver you can easily take the battery out by removing a screw over here, here, over here, and right here. And I'll demonstrate that right now. It's fairly easy to do so and then we can access further maintenance underneath the battery.
And if you want to remove the battery, we simply pull the cable connection gently this way. Definitely don't pull up, pull this way. I've seen some cable connections get disconnected from the motherboard and that's a bit larger of a problem to solve unless you're really good at soldering. So if you wanted to replace the touchpad, it just requires the removal of four screws right here and the ribbon cable. And it's quite easy if you need to do that. And down here we have a chip that's connecting via ribbon cable to the motherboard. And to my knowledge, this is the sensor that indicates whether or not the laptop is closed or not. I suppose this would be allowing the laptop to recognize when it's going into sleep mode with the lid closed. And right over here is the CMOS battery. And over here we have the slot for the smart card reader, but this did not ship with one installed. We just have this plastic case here as a placeholder. The ribbon cable connection to the motherboard is just right up here. And over here, I imagine that's the slot for the fingerprint reader if your laptop shipped with one. And I believe the ribbon cable connection is right here. And this empty spot right here is for an NFC module. And I'm not too sure what you would use that for in this laptop. I know it's used for payments, identifications, access control. I suppose it would be particular to an organization that ordered it. Would be kind of interesting to install one. I don't know if I would have a use for it outside of pure novelty. So that wraps up the motherboard tour. If you have any other questions or comments or you feel like I left something out, leave me a comment below and I'd love to discuss it further there. I'm definitely not an expert. So let's get this thing back together. So now we're ready to test out some games. I've got quite the setup here. Connected to the USB-C port, I have my external NVMe SSD with my Steam library loaded up. This mechanical keyboard is hooked up to a USB port, as well as this mouse over here. And to record gameplay footage, I have an HDMI cable connected over to my workstation PC right here. And we'll be recording with a Elgato 4K60 Pro connected to a PCIe lane. Now, of course, you can just use the ThinkPad keyboard, but I have all this hardware laying around and it does enhance the gameplay experience, um, especially for particular titles. So let's see how well this T14 performs in 2024.
With how well the T14 has been performing with gaming and everything else, I was really interested to find out how well it would do with DaVinci Resolve and video rendering. So we're able to run the latest version of DaVinci Resolve, which as of the shooting this video is 18.6, and it was relatively easy to move clips around, make cuts, and small little edits. I was really impressed with the performance. So I've lined up 11 minutes and 6 seconds of 1080p footage to render. Let's see how long it takes. So we're definitely putting the CPU to test. We're running at 100%, 9.5 gigabytes out of 40 gigabytes being used. And the GPU is running at between 30 to 45%. All right, so the render is complete and it took six minutes and 57 seconds. I honestly think that is really great, especially compared to all the other ThinkPads that I've been testing out. So yeah, here we go. 1080p footage is looking good. I think that daily driving this laptop would be a really nice experience. The system is very snappy, it's very fast. You can get to watching 1080p video with relative ease on any streaming platform that you like doing research about the important things, and using software like Office 2021 or Office 365 would be, of course, no problem whatsoever. I could definitely see myself using this every day at my day job. So would I recommend this laptop for use in 2024 and onward? I absolutely would. I think I would have a great time using this laptop and I found it to be a great value both in its size, portability, and functionality. The 6 core 12 thread Ryzen CPU really makes a big difference in productivity and I'm really impressed by the Radeon RX Vega 6 graphics. So that about does it for this review. I hope this helped you out in some way. If you're using this version of the T14 in 2024, please let us know in the comments below. I would love to hear all about it. As always, I hope you have a great day and thanks a lot for watching.